Right after its creation, the cosmos was shrouded in darkness. I mean, I wasn't there, but that's what most scientists are thinking. All of the stars were hidden behind a thick cloud of primordial gases. Then, all of a sudden, something cleared up this fog, and the universe started shining, as it finally woke up. But how did this happen? Eight faint, recently discovered galaxies might hold the answer. The Big Bang created our world around 13.8 billion years ago. At first, it was just a super-hot and chaotic boiling soup of particles. But over time, things cooled down, and particles could finally stick to each other. That's how the atoms appeared – some helium, but mostly hydrogen, the very first element. And these first elements started creating thick gas clouds, which were very opaque. Then the first stars started forming. They were incredibly bright, emitting lots of light, including ultraviolet radiation. But even though these stars were shining, much of their light couldn't travel far because of that nasty hydrogen fog. The gas clouds absorbed and scattered any little light particles around. It was like the light was trapped around the stars. The dark ages lasted for hundreds of millions of years. Then everything changed. Recently, the James Webb Space Telescope has spotted ancient dwarf galaxies from that epoch. Turns out, they're the ones we should be thanking for lighting up the universe. Back then, they were filled with early stars. These stars emitted tons of radiation that was so powerful that it managed not to just overcome, but break apart the hydrogen atoms in the fog. It turned them into charged particles, like particles that carry a little bit of electricity, called ions. Little by little, the fog was cleared away. This process of clearing out the fog is called reionization, and this beautiful time is known as the epoch of reionization. Finally, the light was able to travel to all corners of the universe, which was a game changer, just like humans' age of enlightenment. To find these little igniters, astronomers used a technique called gravitational lensing. Imagine light traveling through space like a straight beam. But just like everything in our world, even time, light obeys gravity. If it's too strong, it'll literally bend the light beams. So when the beams pass near a massive object, the object's gravity pulls on them, curling and twisting their path. That's why black holes look so creepy, as they stretch stars and space around them like some whirlpools. But it's not that creepy. A regular glass or magnifying glass does something similar. Hence the name gravitational lensing. When the lensing object is horrifyingly massive, it bends the light into multiple images of the same object, creating a creepy and mesmerizing structure called an Einstein ring. But if it's not that big, then the bending is less dramatic, and it just slightly distorts the shape of the background object, making it look kind of stretched. Gravitational lensing also helps scientists study things like the spooky dark matter. If the light looks stretched, and it's not just because of some obvious massive objects nearby, then it might be something invisible and heavy bending it. Since these eight galaxies were too faint, no wonder they're almost as old as my unread emails. <laughs> scientists had to use these gravity tricks to observe them. The team studied light from galaxies that are over 13 billion years old. Finally, they focused on a galaxy cluster called Abel 2744, also known as Pandora's Cluster. And these findings helped them understand how even little fellas played a huge role in transforming the early universe. The James Webb Telescope is an incredible tool, and soon it might help us look at even earlier times, at the cosmic dawn when the universe was only several millions of years old. Another great tool, called the Roman Space Telescope, is going to help it. It's also possible that these galaxies weren't the only helpers in this entire saga. These early massive stars were absolutely terrifying. They just don't make them like that anymore. Some estimates suggest they were 30 to 300 times more massive than our Sun, and millions of times brighter. Modern stars have some heavier elements in them. But back then, they used only the stuff available – hydrogen and helium, which is why they were so hot and shiny. But they also had very short lifespans, lasting just a few million years. For example, our Sun is 4.6 billion years old and is still going strong, thankfully. At the end of their lives, they went supernova. 
These colorful bursts of energy were so strong that they forged the first heavier elements in our world and spread them across the universe, planting first seeds for the future planets. Meanwhile, the stars themselves didn't just disappear. They collapsed under their own gravity, creating the first black holes. Now, the black holes are also known for producing insane amounts of radiation. So, it's possible that they might have helped speed up the clearing of the fog. Ironically, they help the universe shine brighter while sucking up the light at the same time. Recent discoveries show that black holes might be much, much older than we used to believe. They probably helped new stars and galaxies form. They were millions or even billions of times the mass of the Sun. The James Webb Telescope has already found a pair of early quasars. That's what we call the bright centers of galaxies powered by supermassive black holes. It's a curious pair of quasars that are merging, just 900 million years after the Big Bang. This might be the earliest and most distant pair of merging quasars ever found. The telescope has also been studying things that are called cosmic lighthouses. In scientific language, they're pulsars. Pulsars are super-dense remnants of massive stars. They form from stars that were once four to eight times more massive than our Sun. One of the greatest things about them is how fast they spin. They're one of the fastest objects in the universe. They might do around 700 rotations in just one second. They got their name because they behave like lighthouses basically flickering radio waves. These beams of radiation sweep across the sky, creating a pulse-like signal that we detect. Now, a star basically works like this. There's nuclear fusion happening inside of its core. Atoms get fused in each other, move at crazy speeds, bump, all meanwhile releasing an unbelievable amount of energy. That's why they emit tons of light and heat. Of course, all this pressure tries to push outward, sweating like crazy to expand a star. The greatest the fusion is, the more powerful and insane the star gets. On the other hand, there's gravity that's pulling inward, trying to compress the star and keep it a nice small dense ball. As long as there's balance, the star keeps living. But when it gets old and spends all of its nuclear fuel, it becomes too weak to generate the energy it needs and can't fight against gravity anymore. That's when it basically collapses under its own weight, going supernova. What's left behind is the star's core, but now it's crushed down to an incredibly small size, about 12 to 17 miles across. It's roughly the size of a city. This dense core is known as a neutron star. The material in a neutron star is so dense that just a teaspoon of it would weigh as much as 4 billion tons like 10,000 Empire State Buildings. And all this collapse sets off a trigger, causing the neutron star to spin super fast, creating a pulsar. It's kind of like when an ice skater spins faster when they pull their arms in. Pulsars often have a smaller star friend orbiting them, although it's not always a friendly relationship. Not long ago, astronomers discovered a pulsar that was surrounded by lots of energetic material for some reason. They realized that all this material was the remnants of another, much larger star. Turns out, the pulsar had been slowly destroying its friend with its terrifying radiation and particles until it basically ate the neighbor away. It's similar to how a black widow spider consumes its mate. So systems like this were called black widow pulsars. In any case, these lighthouses most likely helped the reionization process as well. A long time ago, they could be very energetic stars in small galaxies and could emit enough radiation to transform the early universe. The James Webb Telescope's mission is to find more of these lighthouses and see what role they played in the universe's evolution. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.